So you built your first gaming PC or purchased a pre-built one, and you're thinking, I wanna make some upgrades, but where do I start? Well, the good news is I'm here to help. Hey YouTube, what's going on? I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel. If you're new to the channel, if it's your first time here, I like to do PC builds, sometimes how-to videos, and most frequently I do hardware reviews. I know it doesn't look like it, but I recently put this computer together for a build video, and if you haven't already seen it, I'll leave a link in the description. You can check it out at your leisure. But uh, the gist of it, it had a Ryzen 5 3600 and my RTX 3060 Tough Gaming that I got here. I'll leave a link with all the parts down in the description if you wanna check it out so you can get an idea of the baseline that this PC started with. Now, if you're thinking about upgrading your PC, that's kind of where I wanted to go with this one. Say you built it and you don't know what pieces to buy to upgrade first, or you bought your pre-built and you're like, okay, I wanna make some better performance and buy something new, what can I start with? Taking a look at these upgrade options, I put them into three categories, easy, medium, and hard. Easiest parts I would say to change would be your GPU or your RAM. RAM is literally just plug and play. You pull tabs, pop it out of your system, click the new RAM in, turn it on, and it boots up. Now, graphics cards are a little more complicated, but I'd say they're on the easy scale. They can kind of skew into the medium if you'd want to call it that, but you have to unplug your power connector on the front of your graphics card, and then you also have to pull the graphics card out of the slot. And all that requires is just pushing a tab in on the back of the motherboard and pulling the graphics card. Now, you do have to unscrew the mounting plate on the back of the case. So it should just be two small screws and then push your tab and the whole thing comes out. The next category of upgrades that I would say would be storage and CPU. These get a little bit more complicated that most novice PC builders could not deal with because storage, you have to go into your settings in Windows to actually like activate the storage after you plug it in. Even if you're just expanding your storage, you still need to initialize the drive. And then CPUs are kind of just plug and play. You pull your CPU out, you put your new CPU in, boot it up. Uh, you'll have to swap your cooler and depending on if you have the stock AMD or Intel coolers, they're real easy to take off. A bigger cooler like an air cooler might be more difficult. And then liquid cooling, you have to unscrew a lot of stuff and make sure the piping flow, you know, moves the right way. It's a lot more work. But that's why I put it in the medium category because depending on your setup, you may have more complication in swapping these parts. And with a CPU, you have to make sure your BIOS supports it. You can actually see the sticker here says Ryzen 5000X desktop ready. That's the kind of thing you're gonna look for uh, if you're looking in a store or something. If you're looking online, it's a little more complicated because they're stock photos. But if you have something like that, then the CPUs will just drop right in. And then moving on to the hard category, things I would say are the most complicated to swap are a motherboard, a case, or a power supply. Those things all require you to completely disassemble your PC. If you're doing like a power supply, you've gotta do all the cable routing and everything. If you didn't build the PC, and you don't know where everything plugs in at, like a pre-built, uh, that would be super complicated for you. Cases are almost the same way because you're pulling everything out of that case and putting it into a new case. I'd say that's pretty complicated. And then a motherboard, when you swap that out, your motherboard and your hard drive map windows together. So most of the time, what I have had happen is if I swap a motherboard, windows will deactivate and you have to either enter your uh, windows CD key again or you have to buy an entirely new one, depending on which versions you have. So let's move on and talk about what components I upgraded here, and I'll give you a little bit of info on what you can expect. If you're looking for things to upgrade first, I did the GPU and the CPU. They're some of the most common upgraded parts, and as far as GPUs go, they're extremely universal in PCs. You can put a brand new GPU in a 10-year-old computer and it's most likely going to work as long as you have enough power to run it. Like I said, the first thing that I upgraded was the GPU. I swapped this 3060 Tough Gaming out for my Gigabyte RTX 3060 Ti. The 3060's retail price is $519.99. This is USD. And the 3060 Ti's retail price is $639.99. $120 more for the upgraded graphics card. Is the performance worth it? Take a look. 
If you look at the 3060 versus the 3060 Ti, now I left the 3600 in there for these tests, and you can see the increase across these four games that I ran up. As you get into a less demanding game like Rainbow Six Siege, the increase becomes even greater. So I went from 356.6 to 379.1. That's a really big jump in performance by swapping the graphics card. I'm still on the same settings. These are all done at 1080p, and this is a three run average between all tests, no DLSS, no ray tracing. Apex Legends was quite a jump. Apex Legends is really hard to benchmark for me because you have to jump in the exact same spot. There's no built-in benchmark, so it's tough to maintain the exact same testing over and over again. So actually what I did for these, I just played the game and saw what my frame rate was. So it may be different depending on where I jumped at. So let's talk about my CPU choices. Like I said at the beginning, I have the Ryzen 5 3600 already installed in this system. I decided to take AMD's newest Ryzen 5 chip, the 5600X, and test it against the 3600. Now, I understand this is last generation versus this generation. I didn't have a 2060 to run up against a 3060, so I'm really just working with what I have, but I wanted to see the increase because people are still buying the Ryzen 5 3600. It's still for sale, it's still brand new. I guess you could say people are still buying 2060s, but they're not produced anymore. You can't buy them retail, brand new from Nvidia. Getting back to my point, took the 3600 out, put the 5600X in, check out these results. Swapping from the 3600 to the 5600X, these tests were both done with 30, the 3060 graphics card. I went from 113.1 on Call of Duty Warzone to 129.3. I didn't change anything with the settings. These are still running out of the box settings on the CPUs. The Ryzen 5 5600X is only $100 more than the 3600. And you can actually get a hold of it versus a 3060 Ti or a 3060. I'm also throwing up the comparison between the two upgrades. So if you look at the 5600X upgrade versus the 3060 Ti, the 5600X increase over the 3060 Ti swap, I've got 129.3 versus 129.5 in Warzone. That's a higher increase, and this is on the CPU side. Siege had a little bit of an increase over that, what, four FPS? Shadow of the Tomb Raider had almost the biggest increase with six FPS, kind of tied with the uh, Warzone. And then Apex, obviously I said, is kind of a fluke because of where I jumped at, but that shows a decrease. My recommendation for you is to start easy, pick something like a GPU or a CPU upgrade because that's gonna give you the best performance increase. My top recommendation is the CPU upgrade, as I said. It's one of the best value things right now, the easiest to get a hold of versus a GPU. Good luck trying to do that. And you'll learn more about your computer as you start to take things apart and try to make upgrades on your own. If you're curious about how to perform some of these upgrades and you've never done anything like that, there are plenty of tutorials here on YouTube. And if that's something that interests you and you wanna see it here on the channel, let me know down in the comments and I will gladly throw together a video of how to upgrade certain parts. So that's it for now. I hope I gave you some direction on where you wanna take your build to in the future. Uh, I guess I better clean this place up so I can get started on the next video and the next build. And as always, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel, and I'll see you in the next one. I get unstable. I get unstable.